I mean, Meet the Eddie Bunches, I would always love that show because it gave me <laughs> oh, that my, first, oh, yeah, my yeah. first break. But I, there was something special about You Don't Know Me. I think one of the most special things was obviously speaking to her about, and Sam was just a, a force. I mean, he got nominated for BAFTA for that Ooh, for that time cool. for the show. I mean, I would have loved for us to be nominated for BAFTA for the show because it was that all over the place. Yeah, it was good. It was ridiculous. This is where Lagos meets London. Where Peckham boys chill in Osaka, London. As Muritala Mohammed, Heathrow is, only, is where London Bridge links Todd Milan Bridge via coast. This is where Lagos meets London. Hello, guys. It's your boy Ade, you know this. Welcome to another episode of Lagos Meets London. Lagos Meets London? Wow. Wahala. Wahala, we you know. We'll talk to you later. Don't you worry. know, you know. <laughs> no, no, don't worry. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to <laughs> okay. that. So like, you know when Lagos Meets London, there's always Wahala. OJ, let them know. Ah, um, it's your boy OJ. If you still don't know, get to know. Hi guys, it's your girl Tony in the building. And just to let you know, this episode was sponsored by Tasty's African Food. Tasty's African Food have their outlets all over southeast of London. We're talking about Erith, um, Stratford, Greenwich, Woolwich, Ilford, Chatham, everywhere. Honestly, there is a Tasty's for you anywhere you're going to. And you guys, can you see OJ? Just it's jump on their snacks. It's as well. always tasty. It's always tasty at Tasty's, guys. <laughs> always jump. I beg you, jump on Tasty's. It's so nice, so lovely. And you might actually get a discount if you mention Lagos Miss London. Actually, you never know. Tony, you know, I was there this afternoon and Wait. like almost 10 people, I'm not even exaggerating, were walking in and they're like, do you have pop-up? They're like, no, we're sold out. For I real? do have pop-up, we're sold out. I do told you guys, I told out. you guys. So, so you need to grab it. You trust need to me. grab it. And the thing is, it's very cost-friendly. Yes, yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's very, very affordable. Like, it's affordable. Yeah. Yes, it is, it is affordable. Very, very much more than some other people. Uh-uh. No, I need you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, All right, guys. Yeah. I'm very sorry. I feel rude. We have <laughs> we have pedigree in the house. Mm-hmm. 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 We have pedigree. Mm-hmm. We have all not roll the drums. Roll now the we're drums. playing. We're playing in blue tick territory. Oh, you get what I mean? Friend. This is not blue tick that was paid for. No, this one. Our years, mm-hmm. This is not blue tick that was paid for. This mm-hmm. was the one that was gained through skill. Mm-hmm. Hard work, yes. Experience, prestige, a yes. lot of things. Sweat. It is. You might know her as Gladi <laughs> <laughs> from Meet the Odu Banjos. <laughs> yes, so. Mm. Meet the Odu Banjos. Yeah. Do what it confuse me. It's not. Like everybody gets that. <laughs> yeah. that meet the Odu Banjos. Person. Yes, okay. meet the Odu Banjos. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> for everyone is watching this. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yetunde Oduwole, a.k.a. Mama, Mama yes. yes. Yes, there's only one. Any yeah. other one is a fake. Period. That's and that's on the period, you know. <laughs> that's on the period. <laughs> Guys, um, <laughs> before we jump into the conversation today, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. You can, if you don't want to, if you're a Nigerian, you don't want to waste your data. You can listen on Apple Podcasts. You can listen Spotify. on Spotify. Spotify. You can listen on Google, Google, Google Podcasts. Pl- everywhere. We're everywhere. Everywhere. And guys, so, please right, make sure I mean, to engage on Spotify because this actually gets us recommended for other people. We do the hard work, guys. Please don't let us. Guys, please. I have to stop. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Yeah. And you, say, you, you put in the work. Yeah. yeah. So you come from Lagos. We like to work hard and we do the work when it's needed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I don't want it to be cliche uh, and say, oh, where did your acting career start from and all of that. Mm, let's just, let's go. Let's go for let's go questions. to you don't know me. Okay. Um speaking about you don't know me, what is the process of where does it actually start? Okay. For where does it start to say, okay, I'm going to feature on something like you don't know me? Where does it actually start? Okay, so God. So we filmed You Don't Know Me. Now let's let's start from when like when where do you do you get a call or I th- so what happened was I I got the audition. This so you have to audition. Ah, my dear. Where level, there's some levels where I don't have to audition. They just say, is your attorney available? I've had those. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I've been doing this for 17 years. But there Good are times win. when <laughs> I look at the audition, I'm thinking, really, for three lines? But then for this one, they sent me um, the audition in 2000 and... Sorry, beg your pardon. It's my alarm. It might be no sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... We filmed this in 2021. Okay. In from March 2021 to like June 2021. But I auditioned for this in um November, October, November 2020. Wow. 
Wow. So the process this is, was long. Wait, this is t- when you say 2020, this is COVID times. Yeah. 20, so I auditioned 2020. I'm trying to think when I auditioned. I think I auditioned in October or around that October, between October and November. I found out in December. I found out on the 18th of December that I got the job. So you found out on the 18th of December, 2021. 2020. 2020. 2020. So, yeah, I'm just trying to, because obviously it's been a while, but obviously it didn't come onto Netflix until last year, June, which is almost a year ago now, because it had to do its run on, uh, what you call it, on BBC first. Okay. Before they now, because after BBC had it. So BBC released it in November 2021. One. one okay yeah. and then it came out we had to give bbc like almost six months so no it wasn't she november any november december because i had two shows in that november d- december so that's how i remember um yeah and then we had to give them six months and it went worldwide in netflix and obviously when you go going worldwide our levels are changing it yeah. <laughs> yesterday's passing oh, it's not today's <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <I> just digress <laughs> so yeah so that's so obviously you audition so i sent the tape in okay so it's not because my own um, understanding let me, is let me when, finish it again, it, no. No, no, normally when people say <laughs> audition, oh, audition you, you feel like, like you. Long cool. cool yeah, yeah. No, 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 this, this this one is this one is different different so levels so different there's, obviously there are open auditions they are or they give you an appointment so they do do that they do have open cu- uh, cu- calls and then you have obviously your agent tells you oh they want to see you so they'll give you an appointment and that one is like cattle ramp you wait for your turn you wait your turn and you send, end up seeing other actors, big, big names. That's what they're waiting in the Cute. waiting room. Sometimes wow. they like to disgrace all of us like that, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> and so, um, so t- 2021, I sent the tape. It was, remember that time? They were, I mean, obviously, I don't know if you got, during that whole pandemic, it was all self-tapes. I mean, for the first year or two years, there was no work. And when they started opening the, the floodgates for work, it was all self-tape, self-tape, self-tape. Yes. So I sent in a self-tape. Um, I can't look at you, Michelle, self-tape, you know, I'm trying to let you yeah, I know. I go into your bad English. I apologize. But anyway. I'm no, sure. no, please, no. If you don't this understand is the Yoruba, no, no, this, this is, is Lagos. Lagos. This is where Lagos is. If you don't understand so the Yoruba, pinch your neighbor. Is there so for me? Excuse me. Can you explain this? We will yeah. put some time to. Yeah, you put some time. Yeah, I'm a lot of time Yeah, but I know that. Obviously, I've been here since I was 15. So my English accent can be very conk when it wants to. But then, if I want to do the Nigerian accent, it can do, you know. You can go both ways, isn't it? Brother, man, I can Say no more. I breed. I'm just a head. I'm just trying to remember because it's been such a long time since we filmed the show because sometimes you might film a show six months they're still trying to edit it especially if they have so much footage and oh my they had footage they had enough footage for eight episodes for this event oh. and the thing pained me because there was some really good stuff that myself and and sam filmed that they cut on the on the um, floor and i hurt but you know what it is what it is yeah. it is it is life i mean if they ever came out with an extended version people would love it so i digress so anyway i auditioned in 2020 and then we started filming March. But before I auditioned, so I sent the self-tape on. I didn't hear anything. Then the director called me. He wanted to speak to me. But when I got there for the audition, he didn't, like, ask me to read again. He just said, asking me questions about my life, my kids. His name is Sam. Okay. Sam Mossad. He said, oh, what do you do? Can you call? What, you know, what, you know, you mom, okay, what do you do in your spare time? Tell me about yourself. Or oh, you were married. Or, you know, so I, I was really quite surprised. I've never had an audition like that where just you set chat. the self-tape. And he's like, I don't need to see anything. I've already seen. I know you can act. I said, oh, cool. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Cool, but but honestly, have... Mama Yates can act. Yeah. That so is... like, it's no, like no, no, <laughs> no. When it comes to acting, mm-hmm. you know your niche, and even up outside of your niche, I've seen where you you've seen a video you did you put up on Instagram. Where yeah, you, where exactly. You were speaking like an American. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I've got an yeah. American. I've got an American yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah. No, oh, if you oh, want content, just go go on, go on Instagram. You see content. Mama Yates. M A M A Y T S. You've heard it. Jump on it. Jumping Jump it, guys. right now, like content. Don't be late. Don't no, be late. No, no, no. So we, we did the hair. So when they now I did that audition, I said, ah, this audition is weird. I'm like, all right, cool. So when I called my agent, ah, the guy didn't even ask me anything. He said, really? I said, ah. so don't worry, it's only this is fine. This is this is this is fine. So they that called me again, and this was for chemistry with Sam. I did me. No, I did with me. Sorry, I beg your pardon. That's the main, yeah, for the main those character. Sam main character, Sam and you don't know. You want to play my son. So when I met him and they'd already said to me that I, the guy said, Sam, Sam had said, because they're both called Sam. So Sam had said, the director Sam had said, I want this to be different. I want a show where the mother and son are so bonded that you see the reason behind the whole story because of the love of his mother. That's why you really don't know. Will he do it? Won't he do it? 
Yes. On the whole, did he kill? Yes. Did he kill? Did that kind of yes. You can see the influence of his mom a lot mm-hmm. in his the yes. relationship. So that was what Sam said he wanted, obviously. So when we did the the uh, chemistry read, I didn't know that Sam was spoke Yoruba. Exactly. And because, <laughs> let me tell you something. <laughs> I, I was shocked as well. I was shocked. I was shocked. So, uh, hey, what, what happened was, he had done a film called The Last Tree years ago on Netflix. And I auditioned to play his mum on that show as well. Wow. Then check this. There was another show called Rocks, the film called Rocks. I auditioned to play Bukola's mum on that show. So I was like, when I got them, I was like, what is this? It's if, it's as if God said, Ed, you are, you are going to work together. Yeah. That's how it you know. <laughs> So I'm say, he said it to because I had to see a castle and I'm like, ah. What was what's going on? He to me because I had to audition in Yoruba. Yeah. Like I said, he wanted them oh. to speak Yoruba. He didn't want them to speak English. He said, he said, um, he said uh, Samuel, the director, Tamil Musa said, his mom is, they're from Pakistan. So he said like, he speaks Udu. His sisters don't speak the Udu, but whenever they speak with their mom, the mom will speak Udu to them. They're like, oh, understand, oh, understand. Oh. <laughs> so he said he wanted that niche, that dynamic. So because yeah. he felt that he really wanted a Nigerian family that yeah. was so bonded. And obviously it's never been done before i mean me daddy band i probably spoke a couple of lines of your back yes. it was so and we never did that me and wally spoke your back like we spoke your back during rehearsals but at that time i think me daddy band was they were really worried they were worried that people won't want to watch the show because you were speaking because we we're speaking and i said why are you people so scared of this language your back is such a beautiful language yes it, it is. is it is so so beautiful and anyway, so to cut the long story short, I said speak here, but I looked at them like, blah, blah, cool. And there was like, the director was there, producer was there, like, like six people in the room. We just started talking. And obviously, he's from Ijebode. I'm from Ijebode. Mm-hmm. We said, oh, blah, blah, blah. the chemistry is already there. <laughs> yeah, like, it's <laughs> natural. Yeah, so it's natural. Just at us. They let us speak for like good 20 minutes. They didn't say, well, that audition lasted almost one hour. I've never done a chemistry read in my life. I have, but it was like, Kilo de de we just, we just <laughs> let us run with it. So I was just, okay, can you sit? Can you do this? Can you do that? Okay, you know, speak your about do this. And so obviously they've given us the script. Yeah. And then they're not going to exactly translate the Yoruba. So you have to translate it yourself. So we're not translating the Yoruba ourselves. We did improvisation, yada, yada, yada. And it was like, okay, mm. I think the audition of 45 minutes to an hour we auditioned for. And then I said bye-bye and then that's it. And I left. And from what I gathered, apparently it was either me and, or another person or they didn't even see somebody else. I think from the onset it was me. Oh. They didn't, there was somebody else back up. But from what they said later, and I really and truly, you, 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 you had it in there. Yeah. Because there's another sh- job I did that was the same thing with the first team. They're like, we didn't see anybody else. Once we saw your tape, we didn't bubble. I'm like, <laughs> ah, okay. So there's been times that I've been very lucky with that kind of situation whereby once they see my tape, then, they don't bother with anybody yeah. else or they just say, is your Tunde available? Which I, I'm, I really am happy when they do those kind of things. So anyway, to cut the long story short, I think on the 18th of December, my agent just calls me on the phone. Oh, yes, and how are you? How's everything? I said, I'm okay. So you know what? I've got some news. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> I'm like, okay. You said you got the job. I said, what? <laughs> hey! <laughs> I think, I don't know, maybe I, I got on the floor. I said, rolling. I put my roll. I was so happy. I was so excited. And, oh, dear. And that was um in December. So I knew that we started filming from March. But at that time, obviously, because of COVID, normally you do a table read. So you read all the episodes. So we had to do the table read on Zoom with oh. all the executive from Netflix from America. There must have been like 300 people in that Zoom. <laughs> Wow. wow. It was ridiculous. And then BBC people, so we did the Zoom re- reading, everybody did. And it was like, obviously, that's the first time we got to meet everybody on Zoom. And that's it. Some people I never got to see while I was filming because everybody, people don't realize that when you're filming a, a series, if you're not on set, you're not on set. So you are not going to say, let me just turn up because I want to see somebody. Else. No, it's not going to happen. Okay. So and obviously, we also filmed it in Birmingham. So they had a set built in Birmingham in the studio called the Nightshade Studios or something. And it's a studio that people like Beyonce and all these other people oh. use oh. for um, concerts. It's a huge place. Wow. And they basically built a set. So all that you saw was all built. The in-house, wow. everything was built. Really? Unless the ones on the streets. Yeah, like the yeah. scenes. Like when he met. All the scenes, yeah, the hair, all the buses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything inside the house. So was, that kitchen the area where you guys were was talking. was all built. It was all built. Wow. wow. Everything was built in this place. Even the staircase scene, all yes. built. The only place that wasn't built was a car, the where they bought the car, the car, the car. The car lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not the car lot. So the what's dealership. it called? Dealership. dealership, yeah. Yeah. dealership. That was the only so. one that wasn't built. Everything else, pretty much, is built. 
Wow. Even the hospital thing, I think everything was built. They basically, and then what they'll do is if you're finished filming this one, they'll move the set or they'll dismantle it. So they, they had to set the time for when to film, like I said. But I think we filmed for 50, between 50 or 75 days. Because during the two, week, two weeks wow. during the show, somebody caught COVID. So they had to Ooh. shut that wall. That COVID day, we were we were being tested for COVID every two days. It was the most disgusting thing yeah. in the world. Every two days, it was swabbing your nose. nose. I think I want to say I probably got nosebleeds and stuff like that. But oh, anyway. bless you. So yeah, so that's how I got me. Uh, you don't know me. I think I've, I've yeah. And then we filmed it. I filmed in we filmed it in Birmingham. I was away for a while, and then you know came back to London. Obviously, I'm mum, so. My life is <laughs> centered around my kids. So we have going away for a little bit and coming back. So yeah, that was, that's it in a nutshell. So at the point, wait, when you have to go away, how long, when you were filming, how long did you have to go I away I think for? I was, sometimes I was, I think, I, we've, I filmed, I think in total six weeks. Or my many days, I think I, 20 something days. I mean, shout out to you, but the times when I'll be away for a week, I'll come back for Saturday and then go away, go, go away again. So I'll, be, I'll come home, go home. I'll film during Saturday, go home Saturday night, spend the day with them till Sunday and then come back Sunday night. But I think we did that a couple of times. I mean, it's been a while, so, you know, it might be a bit foggy, but I yeah. don't know that a bit. Oh, bless you. That must like really take a big part of your life doing that. I mean, it does. I mean, the thing about people don't realise when you've got children, they are, I mean, listen, they don't say they don't realise. People do realise. I mean, I, when I used to film, when I filmed Youngers, a lot of people who watched Youngers, I filmed Youngers in 2012. I was pregnant when I auditioned. I think I was seven or eight months pregnant. We started filming the show on the 24th of September. I had my baby on the 24th of September. I was supposed to, I started filming three days after. So originally, wow. so I got, I had a baby on Monday. I got discharged on Tuesday. I went to set on Wednesday. What? Wow. With my wow. baby to do costume check. And then started filming on the following Monday. So I had a seven-year-old with seven-day-old. Yeah. You know wow. the one that was at here, Etienne. Or Etienne yes. was seven days old when I had her, when I was filming on set with her for younger. So if season one, I was quite chubby because I basically I just had a baby. Had a baby. How I'm do in no you, pressure. That's like, crazy. did you have help or something? Well, I had my mom, thank God for her. Yeah. 24 hours. Yeah. And I you went back to work. went back to work. Within four hours. Was he being a sore? The money was paid, it was good. Oh my God. Like, I mean, not many people might not know Youngers, but uh, yeah, I won't youngers. get into it, but, uh, but I, I watched it because yeah. the guy, Shaki, he did an ad for Nike, but you, huh. might, not, you might not really know it, but that's how I. Which Shaki? The one. Shaki is from First Team. Oh, Shaki. Okay, Youngers is different. Oh, yeah, I thought. Shaki's yeah. a tall one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shaki's He's from, yeah, because I Oh, yeah, yeah. First team. Yeah, that one is from first team. His brother passed yeah. away a few, day, a few oh. weeks ago. Wow. But, um, yeah, he's from the first team. Yeah. Yemi was from Youngers. Um, I've done, I've played everybody's mother, mother, brother. It's always like this. <laughs> no, so but do, I think, like, that role actually suits you it well. Does suit like, you. W like, this, the, the series, the, um, do you know me? Uh, the fact that, like, the way you bonded, with your son in the movie that like it was it was extraordinary and you know, like, it gives me uh, like you watch I saw that you watch Ghost did you, did you watch the new one which one um, um, the, the Ghost. book of Ghost the, the series the American series oh yeah Ghost. I was uh, okay Power Power yeah, yeah Power, yeah, yeah. power. Yeah, you said well, Ghost because <laughs> no, no, Ghost is the name of the new one mm. yeah because what the happened was I'm not gonna Ghost. lie yeah. I haven't I'm still I've, I started I, I finished episode season one to season five then something happened I think they moved it from Netflix. And I just, I'm like, what? Yeah, they just, they, they moved it. Yeah, they took it away from Netflix. Yeah, they put it to So I'm still when, I haven't even prime. finished, I never got, I, I think I got to where um, Omar, um, Omari, what's the, what's Omari Hardwick. Yeah, Hardwick got um, shot. My son. So I haven't yeah. moved on to Ghost because the funny thing, it? I've got three friends on it. They will kill me today. <laughs> you have to get on here, man. And no, that's no, no, I will because yeah, yeah, what happens? You know, you have to get stars, and then now yeah. stars is on Disney, so that's okay. <laughs> just, yeah, so you give me kind of Tasha vibe. Yeah, I'm being, yeah, like, that's supportive. Bond, that yeah. bond you have with your son, like regardless, them. you're not being you're not being judgmental, and like it's coming from push, a place yeah. where you're not the typical. Obviously, they'll say, "Oh, she's Nigerian." You're not the typical Yoruba mother, like ah, over <laughs> Kanye. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
no, that's the thing. There was a scene. There was a scene there because I still have the script. I haven't thrown it away because I don't throw my scripts away, which is so weird. I still have. No, a it's not from... weird. If it's, if I if any day if I do one show on Netflix, I'll frame the script. Frame <laughs> I, I, on set. I, I actually have. I still have the script from Meet the Adibans. No, no, actually, no. Let me get. I think Meet the Adibans is in my gar- garage. I still have the script from Enterprise. So ahead with obviously the way I work with all the ski scenes, I do a lot of scene work. I do a lot of work whereby. Um, I sit down there and I highlight and pain. I think where you find the, the journey of an actor. I have a um, an acting coach. His name is Steve Buckwell. He's American. Okay. And we worked hard on these scenes. <laughs> ah, 35 pounds an hour. Oh, long. <laughs> For hours. Your tonze. That's what we call it. Your tonze. You know, you didn't do, you know, so he would, he would talk about something of finding the journey of the character. Okay. So, for example, a lot of people just think, oh, just read the script. That's it. You have to read that script at least three or four times. You have to read the script and think, okay, what does your character say about themselves? What does the character say about other people? What, does other, what do other people say about the character? What does the writer write about the character? So that's how you really, truly break down what you... And then another good way of doing it is looking for someone in your life and getting... Obviously, because I'm a mom, it's so easy. Easy, yeah, yes. To, for me to... I looked at Sam and I saw my son. I have two daughters. I saw him as a son. Yes. And that's what I did. That was, that was one of the, re- and because we had such a great day with the chemistry read when we we're talking, speaking you about, and at one stage on that set, there were about maybe a hundred people, only myself and him understood you about. So we could have been cussing people out. Nobody would know what was going on. <laughs> so there was a couple of scenes where there was a scene where she, I say to him that, um, you know, Mm. I remember that. So that's where. So So there was, but they took it out. And I feel as if in the editing, they changed the story because originally, for for me, I mean, I'm not going to take away from the story because it's amazing. Yeah, it is. It's an amazing story. But I feel as if that when obviously when I when I did the show. Originally, when they auditioned me, there was it was the bond between the mother. They really, which I f- still feel as if they did show. And I, I'm never going to knock anything because I, when I do a job, I love it. It was an amazing show. But for me, that there was for me that scene was when I felt like ah, this a Nigeria mother would have told him where to get off. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. you were very was supportive. So no, 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 you were too supportive. Yeah, well, like, just, that you know, was, which was, you know, but I think I guess it's not being too supportive. It's just like you said, it's breaking down what the vision, the what, what they want yeah, for the OJ. Yeah, OJ, just, listen, there was one point when when he told her like you have to you have to move houses, and then like she was like, oh, but I still have to go to church. He was like, yeah, you can go to church. I still have to go to work, and she was like, yeah, yeah, you can go. Now, African mom, you didn't have to move. <laughs> Like, move from my house. Yeah, so I let him move to this yeah. party, But I guess you know, like I said, for me, it was as, as, as authentic as it, as it was. And a lot of people were sending me DMs. People no, were phoning me. That was like, ah, you're a battle so. And people were like, I yeah, think one thing they were very happy was a lot of people were like, oh my god. Thank you, Yutunde, for uh, allowing your bad language to be on the BBC. Yes, thank, thank you, you for, for that. allowing your bad language to be seen in such a beautiful we, light because we spoke. Yeah, we, we, yes, yes, we did. blew my mind. You know, I bear about when the series was going on, don't know. I never knew you could speak your bad, but the first time I saw you, I was like, ah, no, I saw your bad in my voice. OJ, I looked, I was, I was trying to I see if it was him. him sinking. I was looking at it like, I, I, said, I, like, I, remember <laughs> I went to Google his name. That was this. <laughs> Me because myself. he looks like an init boy. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, the funny thing about Sam, I'm going to give you a secret. Sam has never lived in Nigeria. Ibi Balu said, boy, you're not to call Yoruba. Wow, his grandmother, nah. his grandmother spoke to you. But so he, obviously, I mean, I hope, you know, he I'm just saying it. But he said his his grandmother lived with them and she refused to speak English. So she only spoke Yoruba in the house. So that's how he, he learned Yoruba. Yeah. And so when he, there was sometimes he would speak to Yoruba. You know, from like, I'm going to go to Yoruba. Yoruba And bearing in mind, I was born here. I went back to my journals too. I came back when I was 15. And this boy was just speaking the Yoruba. Like, I'm like, mm, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give I'll you. I go and Google his name. Like, yeah, this guy? No, no, it really, no, you guys really, no, no, no. Because there was a time like mm-hmm. I said, we'll be talking to each other 
and we'll just be speaking about speaking about. And there was a time that was, oh, the the um director would say, oh, you know, yesterday, why didn't you pray in Yoruba? So every single night I started, I start praying in Yoruba. And like all the prayers, it was my prayer. Was, that's how I normally pray. Oh, so, yeah, it's on your you Instagram know. too. So yeah, the way, yeah, so that's does. how I normally pray with my kids. No, Ruko Jesu, Nagbara, Nye Jesu, Luo, Loro, Nkabi, Esi, Obale, Nye Obalo, Lagba, Dale, No, Ali, Wile, Shali, Shali, you know, that kind of thing. So I've been gun, doing gun, that gun. since I was a, a young girl. I think my Yoruba actually got better when I was in this country, which is weird, isn't it? Isn't yeah. It? yeah. yeah. It's weird. You find that you hold on to it more. Yes, you when, do, because you already like learn English in uni and stuff like mm. that. So. Mm-hmm. And then you have so many people around you speaking English. Yeah, it? so it's just yeah. better to I keep think it My mom just home. kept speaking because I came like I, I came here when I was fifteen. My brother was eleven, so my mom just used to speak to you about it all the time, which was easier. <laughs> well, uh, I've just going through like doing our research. Your your mom was born here. My mom was born. So how come she was? Uh, she still retained that. Your side of her. Yeah. I think because like, she had a gr- okay my mom is from Awe so there's a, a popular street in Lagos called Adiola Deco yeah. uh-uh. in- yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Adiola Deco is, is in VI now yeah like, yeah Victoria my yeah. your grandfather is Adiola Deco wow. guys this is pre- pedigree this, this, this is, is really rare really Lagos in like London Deku. put some respect <laughs> <laughs> I did a lot of their crew. <laughs> I, I, used to, I used to work for multi-choice DSTV. Yeah. Off, yeah, so off what happened was in 1947, my grandfather wow. came here to study to be a barrister. And my grandmother, they were love, like they were childhood sweethearts. So they both came here in 1947. So they both were studying. So she was studying midwifery and he was studying. So my mom was born in New Haven Hospital in Hampstead. So okay. I don't know if you guys saw, I, I did a collage on my Instagram with my mom and her yeah, birthday. Yeah, yeah, I saw, I saw yes, yes, I saw and all those photos. So she was born here. Yes. So she had a nanny that used to live in Clapham. I think Clapham Common or something like that. So they were, at that time, because they were in school, they will leave, leave her with them Monday to Friday. And then Saturday and Sunday, they would go and pick up my mom. Wow. Because obviously they were studying at that time, you know, that was what they could do because... It was easier for them to do because my dad was my sorry my dad my grandfather was in the inns of court in I think in I think somewhere in Holborn, so yeah. So my mom was then after she was she left here when she was two years old, just like me. Okay. She left to go back to Nigeria when she was two, and she also came back when she was fifteen. Wow, was he a trend? <laughs> you know, oh, trend <laughs> so I left here when I was two. I was born here. I left yeah. here when I was two. Came back when I was fifteen. That's exactly the same thing my mom did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She came back because her dad put her in, in a private boarding school mm-hmm. to study. Uh, I think what they call in uh, what's it called? Um, St. Lennon's on sea somewhere in Hastings. I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when do you know? So when she came back and she was in boarding school, and yeah. when she obviously when she finished her boarding school, she just continued with life. Yeah. So yeah, so she finished boarding school, did her. I think those days they did technical college, and then she was eighteen years old, and she met my dad, and then. Unfortunately, her dad died when she was 20 years old. Oh, bless her. So I think from the age, I mean, he was... That's Adiola 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 Adiola. Yeah. Yeah, He died in 1973. He was 47 years old when he died. Quite young. He was very oh, young, but he 47. died. 47. Oh, 47. But that man, I've never met somebody. When he died, he died with property because he was also a politician. He was friends with people like Awolowo. He used to be a member of the Island Club, you know, long tennis from all these yeah. Yeah. Club, club, all the Yeah. Adiola Adeku is very prominent in Lagos. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, yeah, I mean, he true. left. When he died, he had 12 children, died, you know. And so my mom, when she went back to Nigeria, she grew up with my great grandmother, who was from Adwekiti. Um, So, yeah, so that's the Yoruba. I mean, for us, I mean, I tried to speak Yoruba with my children. I'm trying really hard because I'm like it'll be the worst shit. Like yeah, I want me a boy. If like, it's no, your like, dinner, eh? <laughs> yeah, they were saying it was but more, short, short. Like I noticed, short because of the inf- probably like not influence from outside because it takes a community to raise a child. It does when they when they leave your about cold about cold labeni when they go out. I mean, everybody, everybody why I so want English, they speak English outside, but I try and speak as much as possible in your at home. But the problem, my mom, I'm saying. You turn to me, speak English, or Yoruba, and then you turn to them, you speak your English. <laughs> so how are we going to make this thing work? Yeah. If you don't keep, so I do try, okay. But there, there are times when, yeah, I think, why do these kids understand you? But we are trying to gossip with somebody. And my daughter, mommy, that's not what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what you say. That's what I'm like, hey, well, okay. that's, that's another thing that yeah. you can't gossip. Once they understand you. But, but you, it's, can... you know what? No. I'd rather go, 
I gossip with my mom. And why would say gossip? Who just ah, yeah? Can you call Can you call? My mom will call me. She'll be on the phone, FaceTiming me, and we'll talk, 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 talk in your bar. <laughs> and our kids, my kids will just look and like shake their head and walk away or whatever. <laughs> or sometimes, you know, um, when we travel, you know, yeah. and I will, you know, my mom and I will start talking to each other at three o'clock in the morning. I'm like, we're supposed to be sleeping. Why are we talking? I'm like, you know, that kind of thing. So I've always said to them that I would love to have that kind of relationship with my kids because well, yeah. that gossiping or speaking in your bar and just gisting and laughing yeah. and stuff like that. So, gossiping yeah. is sweeter in your bar. It is. I, it is. <laughs> like, for example, I was, I mean, I did this thing for a real lifestyle. It's on my Instagram. Yeah. And in, I was re- reciting a poem and it says, once you lay, or no, Kuratike, uh, uh, something, something, or one, two, one, two, one, two, one, she. So, this today, I was no, it's fine. Let me play it. We'll play it. So, I, really, let, let me play yeah, it. so I was saying I'll this to my it. kids. I said, because we went somewhere today. I said, even your character, even if you say, if anybody does something to you that um, offends you, yeah. they're not going to ch- care if that person offends you they will they will remember what how you reacted yeah. as a black woman as a black girl your reactions cannot even be grandiose so i explained that to master for one i said what's he into two on she and they looked at me like i said well, i had to explain I said i can explain it but i can't explain it that much because it's okay remember who you are not really okay but what's he any two on she yeah. is completely too different to what who you are yeah. remember who you are think about it you yeah, do, as much definitely. as you want to try and explain your about back in English, it loses it the essence. No, yeah, it does. It, it does doesn't. completely. It does. It you loses can't, the you can't say to someone with you at least. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not. It's, it's not a language. Yeah, it's, it's a, a culture of things. Like, it's, it's, it's everything. I mean, it's, yeah. If you look it's a at way it, of life. <laughs> look at the way you're about itself as a language has transcended years from slavery up onto yes. South America. Yes. You have things like the Santa Maria. Yeah. And, you know, they use all these Yemo Jaos. The, yeah, in like, Cuba, Cuba, Brazil. Especially in Brazil. Yeah. So a while ago, one of my friends, she's from Brazil, we're talking to her, oh my God, you know, when I go home, I can't wait to eat a- Akaraje. And I'm like, Akaraje. Mm-hmm. I said to myself, hold on, that's Akara. But you've now said Akaraje, which has transcended I'm how many 400 years ago yeah Yoruba people went to Brazil yes. and so today yeah. Yoruba is still infused in they their have culture. the culture so they much said, so. They said, yeah, I don't know if it's I don't know which artist, artist it is but no it's not an artist it's one of the Yoruba gods I mm-hmm. think is it Orum, Orumila mm-hmm. but they they still worship Orumila they worship Brazil. everything <laughs> yeah they do they everything because yeah. my two teacher, children have a Yoruba teacher and she has a client he's in he's based in Brazil and the guy is really into the yes they do yeah that, they do how to do the chanting so obviously yeah. he needed to make sure his Yoruba was Good, clean uh, yeah so, so when he was learning the incantations and she was like and he was like oh no you know cause I know the guy so the fact that he is you know it's a full-on if i warrior if i you know priest or whatever wow. they call it and stuff like that so you know so we <laughs> find that they are still very much so that yoruba itself has lived and is still there and i think it's such an important part of my life as and I say being able to speak Yoruba has, ah, it shot I do pele or jesu. It has, you know, at least allowed us to be able to earn some more money with the language. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm uh, not to digress, sense. guys. Oh, sorry. Speaking of Yoruba, can you see Tony, if you move your mic a bit, can you see what Tony's wearing? So mm. that is a, a dark boy, clothing. It's an okay. urban streetwear brand that infuses the Yoruba culture and yeah. urban streetwear. So check them out oh, on oh, Instagram. Cool. It's Is called Adapo. They have cold different Adapo. merchandises. They put different quotes about your um different Yoruba proverbs. Should we read this one so, out for them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please go please. for it. Go for it. Omoloabi is a Yoruba culture concept describing um, a person of exemplary character, the embodiment of courage, patience, and respect. Right. Beautiful. So, so you've learned the Yoruba word today now. So Omoluabi. Omoluabi. So Don't check just out... be learning the abusive words in Yoruba. <laughs> no, even this one, Adapo. My mom was ah, Adapo Mares in your mom. <laughs> you understand that concept? Yeah, yeah. So what that one that Western culture more Yoruba more. So okay. Just, yeah. Yeah, 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 Yoruba is Yoruba. Yeah, 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 like it's Yoruba. Yes. Ah, we should even get a T-shirt. Yoruba. Yoruba. Hey, that's a that's a that's a very big hundred one million dollar business idea. Don't steal my idea. So in terms of chemistry, when you say chemistry reading, do you have to do chemistry reading with all the people? Like obviously you had the daughter. Uh, I only did chemistry with Sam. Okay. I didn't okay. do I didn't meet Bukola until the day we were filming. 
Like the first week we were filming, like which is we start filming tomorrow. I met her today. Really? Last time I'd met like weeks before. But you guys were cool as well with your yeah, daughter. Like you, you really did it well. Because that's that's what you do as an actor. Yeah, you this professional you, boys. You, you look at when it comes to chemistry. If you look at the chemistry in between. I just I got lost in the story. Yeah, yeah. They really, that's what they yeah. were just trying to feel. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, like my yeah, mom, yeah, yeah. Like, this is what my mom too would do yeah, for that's, me. Mm-hmm, but that was mm-hmm. what they were trying no, to do. Basically. She was down, Andre, yeah. like yeah. Andre, like. Well, speaking no. Speaking about you being on set, uh, I can see that you're very, very good with makeup, and Girl. then you're very heavy on your makeup game. Do you let like? Do you have like makeup artists on set, or do you? One hundred percent. Um, I obviously I started working as a makeup artist when I was nineteen years yeah, old. Yeah, obviously. Um, it I shows. was working in Selfridges. <laughs> I started. Selfridges. I was, yeah, when I was okay. young, when I was like seventeen years old, I started working in Selfridges. Wow. So I said I was one of the girls that launched Iman Cosmetics with a girl called Lola. Lola is um, oh God, what's the Lola? Lola, Lola does Lola like Maja. A, yeah, she does. Oh, sorry, does she have a product? Lola does um a lot of FX. She teaches. Her name is Lola Manja. So we were the girls actually launched uh, Iman Cosmetics and had a program in 1990 something. I don't remember, 97. Mm, okay. So I've always loved makeup. I love makeup. I, it's like my escape. Yeah. Mm. Slap it on and feel good about yourself, actually. <laughs> so, but obviously, when I'm on set, I. Even if I know how to do the makeup, I don't get involved anymore. Oh, you don't? I've made mistakes before in the past that when I speak my mind about the makeup, the makeup artists start getting one kind, one kind. I just myself, you said, surely, you shed ton wa ron embi ba ni pe, ko a tin. That's why I always tell people. Let me tell you something. Let them off. You saw you, Michelle, she buy. Do the makeup. Get your money and go. When I saw, I think I learned a couple of years ago. I used to like, oh, you know, they would ask me and I'm like, I don't want to say anything. They'll say, can you send us a photo of yourself? Because obviously, they've seen my acting photo. They're like, oh, can you send us photos of your... Ah, even I'm not saying photo share. I'm not saying photo share. I'm not saying photo share. So I'll send it. They're like, ah, yeah. okay, come. Why not? Where is this? Ah, we know, okay, you know how to... So they're not something that you find out that... Because they know I can do makeup. Okay. They're not to get... get in, um, what's the word? Un- not uncomfortable. Like they have to meet up to the standard. Yeah, of- but th- I find that they always p- dress me down. Oh, they don't why? give me, oh, this, mm, that's well. One guy, well, I remember one director said to me, I did not hire you because you're beautiful. I hired you because you're funny. When they told me that, girl, I said, you know what? I'm here to collect my money. Exactly. Run me my bills. I come here to do the kill-up way. My speaking, I speak in the get out. I don't care. No. No. Yeah, if you want to, do, if you like, put the foundation, red business in it. Well, I said to myself, I learned the lesson on a few sets in the past. Before I'm like, oh, you know what? The eyebrow is looking. Nickel. Mm-hmm. It's your work. Because yeah. I learned, I had to tell myself that the act, I'm an actress when I'm on yeah. set. I'm not a makeup artist. Yeah. No. You want me to do my makeup? Let me go to my YouTube channel. Exactly. I'll do my makeup there. Yes. Because I realized that people just get so angsty. Mm-hmm. Even when you're trying to help. help I'm like, you yeah. help anybody. Mm-hmm. I'm not helping you. You do your job. You're being, you're being paid a lot of yeah, money for this. <laughs> so I, I learned that lesson hard. Yeah. Hard work. We create or never buy you. Shut your mouth. I just... Is this it? Yes, thank yeah, you very thank much. Thank you very much. Can we go? <laughs> Are you okay here too? I said, girlfriend, I'm yes, fabulous. <laughs> Are you happy with it? Yes. Yes. Makeup artist. Is this what you are happy? Yes. Nobody has the motive. <laughs> because what you no. fail to realize is if you bitch and say so much, yeah. oh, she's difficult to work with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's yeah, hard that's to work the, with. Yeah. That's the yeah. problem. Yeah. So twice somebody called me I, and I'm like, I said, why not? Who told you I was difficult to work with? I said, hey, do you know the last time I worked with that person? 13 years ago. Would you like to know why they said I was difficult to work with? Or what happened? When I now narrate on my story, they're like, ah, it's one day well, I give you yash because I don't think what you, I could have taken what you took. Yeah. So when I'm on make, when I'm a set, I swear to you, even if it's moving me to talk, uh, I don't say you that. Keep it the in. eyebrows Tony, are not eyebrowing. someone that will not agree with no, <laughs> this one. Listen, 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 you, guys, let me you. you need to realize when it's on the call sheet, you are not in the makeup department. Yeah. You no. are in the acting department. Exactly. Yeah. If I'm number six, but the day I become number one in that script, hey, I will tell you what my mom, I will tell you what I want to tell you. Yeah. But now that I'm not number one, maybe I'm number two, number three, I come mama will never buy any. We shall all be. <laughs> as, as I said to my daughter, fam, fam, oh fam, oh fam, fam. Sad, just, just let, leave them. I let know, them, it's let them do what yeah. they want. Because, paid. because once you say something, it's... it's before where I was on a set recently. And um, oh my God, I have never ever felt like a goddess. I was, 
I was because I don't want to make it seem myself. I've not been on a set where I was. I didn't feel I was on a set and I was doing a show, and the budget was huge. The makeup artist was just to die for. Aww. By the time they finished with my face, that was the first time in a very long time I felt amazing. Wow. Because every time I'm on a show, they're trying to make me look as if I'm 50 years old. Well, I'm 50 in two years. Fair enough. Yeah. Maybe that I'm 60. Even my mom is going to look cuter than that. Like, okay, is this what you want? But I'm just not like, oh, you know, oh, you look too glamorous. I'm like, well, then what do you expect a black woman should look like? Because this is the issue. You find that some people are so scared to put makeup on a black woman. Because they want that dowdy mummy looking. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, mommy. I'm I'm sexy. I'm no, we're coming to that. We're you coming know? to okay. that. Can, that one can will I come. confirm something? In yes, terms darling. of when it comes to makeup, is it if a white person has been a black person, if a white been a black woman, if a white person is doing your makeup, yeah. are they able to Oh my goodness, oh, yeah. I've had I've had some amazing makeup artists who are black and white. Oh what yeah. Oh. It depends. So it doesn't, it it doesn't, doesn't it, listen. Oh, okay. What you find is Whatever subculture some, you grew up in it doesn't it will look on me. I've had some white people do my makeup that I'm like, wow. Yeah. And I've had some black people that I'm like, ah, sister, girl, what? Come on. What are you doing? Chelsea, come on. We haven't said Chelsea, come on in a long yeah. time. But I, I've been blessed that, like I said to you, I learned a lesson a few years ago. I do not say anything. When you give me costume, the former year today will complain. I don't like this. Mm-hmm. Now. Is this what, what, where, <laughs> is this what she's wearing? Yes. Yeah, they embodied it. Mm. Yes. Let's go. What next? Let's go. go. We move. I might. I might. Because I've got, obviously because of my shoes, feet. I've got big feet. I'm an eight, nine. I always oh. ask them, do you mind if I choose a pair of shoes? The reason I say this is many years ago, I watched this guy called Alex Guinness. Alex Guinness used to be, was um in Star Wars. And he was Obi-Wan Kenobi okay. as the older actor. Yeah. And he said, when I'm pl- uh, f- uh, playing a character, I always choose my shoes. I don't care what the costume looks like, but I choose my shoes. The reason you choose your shoes is, your shoes is where your feet are. The feet, as, comfortable. it's not even the comfort. It gives you the essence of who the person is. Mm. Because when you're standing, are you standing tall? Like when you wear heels, there's a different gravitas. Yes, yes there is. You true. feel like a bitch, I can do this. I can do anything. Sassy. You know, mm-hmm. there's a difference when you're wearing salubata. It's a different thing. <laughs> yeah. It's Sandals a difference. For yeah, <laughs> salubata, <laughs> slippers. But if you choose the shoes for your character, mm. and it helps you align with who you are. Because yeah. the shoes, if it's pinching you, you're like, mm, there's a mm-hmm. different way you are. Because I remember um, they used to say Marilyn Monroe used to shave one of her shoes because she wanted to have that wiggle. You notice she used to have. So for me, my shoes are very, if I can get to choose shoes, then I'm okay. If you like, put me in sackcloth, that's your business. You don't care. I don't care no more. Because I had to learn that in this business, as much as you're trying to be a good actor, they watch you. Yes. People talk behind your back. Yeah. True. So for the sake of, please book me next week. Mm-hmm. The kids I have to pay, I have violin lessons to pay for. Yeah, I if saw you, that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if you say job. Yeah, they're good. As far as I'm concerned, when I'm an actor, you are paying me to be there. Until you get to a place where you can tell them, you know what? I'm running the show. I'm the producer of the show. Yeah. yeah. But I've learned that if, well, if you're a working actor. Well, if your main character, like, obviously. If your main be... character, if you're Damson Idris and you're Idris Alba, you can't say what you like. The yeah. Anglo-Jones will talk, you know. But for they, me, they, I just yes, feel as if. They are, they, they yeah. That, they are, yeah, for they me, are... I feel as if, obviously, because you're trying to learn the character, understand. But if the, 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 if the producer, sorry. And if you find that sometimes, even the makeup artists will do the makeup. They're not, I've had this, oh, can you please take up the lipstick? They didn't like, the director didn't like the lipstick. The producer didn't like the lipstick. And you're like, ah, this lipstick, there's nothing here. Okay, nobody just want Vaseline. Let's go. So I've learned, because I can do makeup, I don't interject. Yeah, I don't say, because true. it's not yet today. Yeah. They're not paying for yet today. Yet it's true. Uh, yeah, it's so I just had to yeah. change that mindset. Because I found that because I, I spoke up or I wanted to say things, it just wasn't working for me. And for me, I just say, you know what, for the sake of... You didn't have the I energy just want to, anymore. Oh, no, I just want to no. collect my money. Yeah. Because... So, like, talking about looking good, mm-hmm. if it's one thing you're doing, you're doing that very well. Oh, thank you, babe. You, you're really doing that well. And I can't lie, like... I don't think you're in your late forties. Oh, I think you. I mean, my I'll be fifty in two years. Yeah, I think but, she, she but I think like them. no, I think like she's in her late twenties. Yeah, I know those them already. She already acted. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. yeah. Oh, no, wait, where is acting system? You've acted. You're off your head. Like you have the code. You like have the code. Oh, okay. You acted. It. Yeah, like you're in your twenties. You're not in your forties. I know yeah. where my forties are because this Alex Shekbo get get No, but like do you know like seeing you? 
you like doing your fitness stuff, like your routines and all of that in the gym, your workout and all? Like you're still very active. Uh, and you're telling me your four is your no yeah, my knees are not as good as they used to be. <laughs> Another thing I noticed is you know speaking about someone that's grown up in the time that you grew up, you actually know about how Instagram works, the mm-hmm. algorithm yeah, and the everything. Algorithm. I was going through your page and I saw when you said um, Instagram now only 10 you have 24k 20, 26,000 I barely get I mean there was a 10, time and only like 10% of yeah because, it's ridiculous yeah because, yeah, because have, what Instagram is doing now is they, they've monetized Instagram if you actually want people to see your stuff you have to pay you have to promote your stuff except people are actually seeking you out like when you acted in this uh, oh, yeah. I, I and knew... then people want to come and like who is this person that was that That's happened when that was your social was media was ridiculous the way by but on a normal day it's... my social media blew like had like an influx of Lagos people come a lot of access from like they, Lagos who didn't know who I like, see you <laughs> oh my god and they yeah. started following or you people were sending me DMs can you come to Lagos and there was a time that it really pained me because when that meet the you, you don't know me came out I was this close to jumping on a plane because everywhere they were, every people were just sending me, oh, they're talking about you don't know me. Can you come to Lagos? Can you come? I'm like, ah. Yeah, yeah. And I wasn't on the on the PR junket, which is fine. It happens. So it hurt a little bit that I didn't get the opportunity to go to Lagos. Because like, if I did or more, I probably would have left. Yeah, I like would, I, my kids. Like, I, yeah. My children are my are my life. I'm a lone parent, so I have to center myself. Yeah. And my mom is, you know, she's 70 years old. There's only so much the poor oh, woman can her. do. Yeah. So my kids, they're, you know, so I I couldn't jump and like run quickly to Lagos and and see if which I wanted so badly to do that week when this thing came out because it was we got to number two in Lagos. The only only reason we didn't get to number one was because of one remake of a show that everybody even complained about. You know, <laughs> just gonna leave was it like that. It was a Nigerian show, mm. and that was. I think we we got to everywhere. We were number two in Trinidad, number four in Argentina, number two in Croatia, number one in Jamaica. We got to number two. America was number four and number six. I'm Niger, sure. that Niger one, eh? It was like it was in the bag. Ah, we were number one. Or it was just the numbers was just silly when they sent the figures to us. It was a show that came out, it was a remake of a show that people were even pissed off that the remake the happened. Remake happened. And we're like, what kind of nonsense? Maybe it's Mary Men too. Know. Know. So maybe it's Mary Men too or something. It wasn't like even Mary Men too. I'm just going, my fashion ribbon one because they may not. I don't want to piss off anybody. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> you know, but yeah. it was, it was, it would have been nice for the show to get to number one. Yeah, Georgia, but we. I think it was number. I think at a point in time, I opened Netflix and it was number one in the UK because no, it was week, number one in UK. UK we got yeah. it was number one. It was. I mean, at one stage, every week people were just. And it was, it, yeah. it did really well. The fact that they even sent me the Argentina one Spanish guy's DM, oh my god, hola, I watch it to know Argentina. They translated it in, into French, it's in, in Spanish, Spanish, yeah. And the guy sent me the clip. I'm like, ah, okay, thank you. Mm. <laughs> I, I saved it. No, but I think if it's one thing you're really good at, you're really good at your job. Oh, thank you. Yes, and you are. that, yeah, like, sure. that alone, no, no. Oh, girl, you're making my head. <laughs> oh, it's, it's no, no, oh, no, 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 no. If, if it's, no, no, no. It's, it's the character. No, it's like, like she, she doesn't I, I mock about. I don't know about... why many Nigerians will message you is because Nigerians, we have this thing where if we watch something that's like an abroad, like production Standard. that's been done abroad, yeah, and then we see somebody speaking Yoruba, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, they, did they, did they, did they take this person from Nigeria to come and act? Yeah, here? Or like they just come there. Something was, was yeah, about, yeah it was, it was very nice. It was very it was nice. It was yeah, very nice. It was one nice. of my, it was one of my, my. I mean, meet the Eddie Bunches. I would always love that show because <laughs> it gave me a, oh, that my was, first. Uh, my yeah. first break, but I, there was something special about you don't know me. I think one of the most special things was obviously speaking to about and Sam was just a, f- a force. I mean, he got nominated for BAFTA for that Ooh, for that time cool. for the show. I mean, I would have loved for us to be nominated for BAFTA for the show because it was that all over the place. Yeah, it was good. It was ridiculously. Yeah. I think something else got nominated, which I wouldn't give side eye, but that's their own business. Like I said, <laughs> well, I don't that want to talk too much. Uh, no, no, no. So, you... yeah, let's come to media the branches now. Okay. Yeah. That, that is... Um... <laughs> you know you know the part that killed me? <laughs> it was their anniversary. <laughs> that one killed me. That that part off nah, me. Do you know what I like about <laughs> media the branches? It's, it's a show that is... You can just... You don't have to watch, but just put it on and... 
you can be listening and be doing enough and you're just in a good mood automatically. Yes. Yeah. It just puts you yeah, in a good yeah, mood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it just puts you in a good yeah. mood. And you just disappear into, as if you're like, you're in the sitting room mm-hmm. and you're just watching people. People, people talk doing, like, like, people just people doing their just thing. Doing their, just, <laughs> I just, I just laugh. You can just sit by your coming and say something random. watching, exactly. Like, what's wrong? <laughs> but how, when it comes to production, like a production like that, how does he? How does he work? Do they like? And again, did you have to audition for it? Oh yeah, audition. Oh, wow. <laughs> the joke about it was, they didn't even think I was motherly enough. Wow, I remember this very well, and I was pissed off. <laughs> wow. that? I'm like, oh, it's already this. Yeah. But anyway, it's it's many years ago. So in 2010, um, I think summer 2010. Um, before not even summer two thousand and ten. So the people I did Ori lifestyle with, they did a, they wanted me to. I did a an, a voiceover for them for one of their adverts. So there's a company called Path P P two P, Path of Possibilities. So the girl that owns Peter Ori lifestyle, she did this charity called P two P. So I'm coming to where I'm going. So the director that directed the the she said, oh my goodness, and I'm thinking of doing a show about Nigerian family. I'd love for you to audition. I'm like, no problem. This was years, like like I said, 2010 or 2009. And then, so I went for the audition. It was open audition. And Wale Ojo was also being auditioned. A couple of Nigerian actors, big Nigerian actors in the bill and all these people. And they were running late that day. There was, so one or two of them, they like, ah, what is this nonsense? This people, why they constantly left? So myself and Wale were still there. So we auditioned and they had already done the pilot. Wow. For, with another family. Mm. But I think there was something missing in the pilot that they did was the fact that both actors were lead. They were not Yoruba speakers. Oh, oh okay. Nah, they, they were... It depicts the point. And no. it, it was, <laughs> there was something. The amazing actors, both of them, beautiful, looked very handsome, very stunning. But that Nigerian-esque thing that you need. You need it. That's though. South London Nigerian family. Not even South London Nigerian. <laughs> you need it. There are certain things. It's like a sorrow. It's like a sorrow. It's like No matter how much you want to try and pull somebody who's non-Nigerian to do a Nigerian role they have to really earn that Nigerianness. to be tricky let me explain myself yeah. there's something about us that we have that even you can fake it don't get me wrong but if you really want to get it good get somebody who at least even if they don't understand how to speak the language there's something so you get what I'm saying and there was something that those that, that was missing in the pilot that they originally did so they wanted to do it again. So when me and Wally now came and auditioned for it, it was amazing. It was fun. We auditioned for hours and hours and hours. After I want to say, oh, I'm tired. I wanted to go home <laughs> anyway. So I digress. So I auditioned for it. I didn't hear anything from them for months. Now, November 2010, I think it was on a Friday. So Deborah and Andrew, they now called me to come and meet them in McDonald's in, Ca- in South London, McDonald's in Brixton. I think I've said this. Is story. it that? Is it that the same one like at the, at the junction? Oh no, honey. I, I, I has been there since then. Oh my. Oh my. So I, we went there. Um, so I met them. They said, "Oh, you know what? Um, you know, remember we had this? Oh, yeah, yeah, well, it's okay. Oh, you know, we're starting filming on Monday. We, you know, we want to know if you're interested in playing the role of Gladys." I said, "Ah, Monday. They're giving me script today, Sunday, and we're going to start <laughs> filming Monday. Don't I need time to learn the lines? Obviously, I was still a baby actor then." Baby actor in the sense that the screen work, I'd never really done screen. That was my first TV role. Okay. I'd done a lot of theater and I understood the concept of you really have to learn lines. And even to today, sometimes, you know, you want you can't wing it, but if it's not really sitting in you, you can't wing you it. You can wing it. And it means that you haven't done character work. If you, there are times when you, you know, there's some actors, they've done a character and they're like, oh my God, what would your character say? They've done the work so much that they know the character inside out. People like Angela Bassett, Viola Davis, that kind of thing. And it took, I digress. So they called me on Friday. I went for the, for the meeting and like Monday, I'm like, ah, okay. So on that Monday, we filmed in Clapham North. It was in a school. And they, like that, they also built a set within the school, <laughs> within yeah, the gymnasium. That- and so while it, and I, you know, met and Mikey. Okay, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, so we all met and then myself, Wale Ojo, 
Daniel that plays my son and Shade. And then the girl that was supposed to play Auntie Funke didn't turn up. Wow. The girl Literally. a woman. Literally. <laughs> it has to be it a woman. It wasn't even a, a woman. It was a girl. She was a young mean? girl. Wow. No, the young girl can play she Auntie Funke. She was a young girl. <laughs> she was originally in the original pilot. pilot. Wow. And she turned off her phone. Wow. She's still an actress till today. Wow. But my for for Rukobwa Shurie, as Yorubas will say, if you don't understand that Yorubas, pinch somebody and they'll tell you what it means. It means I'm just I'm just not gonna say her name. Yeah. Because I think it's unfair because it's a long time ago. It's like 13 years ago. She's older now, so I'm, you know. And she had her reasons. Anyway. So we started looking for somebody to play Antifunke. Wow. Literally, we started filming that Monday. Improvising scenes, writing, every script was written. So I was like, well, I know this auntie. Moji or Bantefa, I said, who is Moji Bantefa? <laughs> so I said, I think I'd met her before because there's another thing I'd done. You know, I said, called her, wait, Auntie Moji, where are you? said, ah, she's at work. I thought that she used to work for London Overground. <laughs> In Tottenham. She, she basically left her job and came, <laughs> that, came to she, set. That's the same the but same, I'm filming the other person. That's how she is in the series too. <laughs> I swear to God. That's how she is in the series too. I <laughs> left her young. And came downstairs in her overground uniform. <laughs> that's how she is in the series. And, but when she got on set, that woman is a powerhouse. I don't think I've ever laughed the way I laughed. No, she's... she's Auntie, she's, Auntie Moji she's Fatefa. She's on another level. She's on another level. When it comes to improvisation, you know there's some people they said they have a funny bone. She has, in short, funny bones. Yeah. <laughs> it's not only one. It's the whole skeleton funny is funny. Macad- she says, I'm saying, Macadis Benz. Macadis Benz. Macadis Benz. I will shake like this. I'll do my bum bum. Yeah. yeah there's, one, there's one line said, you have to wear a small clothes to tuck you in. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if you see my kids, my kids have watched that show over and <laughs> over. Oh, mommy, I just want to laugh. Just so sometimes in our house, I just go, oh, you're watching me today. I just, yes. And they'll just sit down because we have this L-shaped couch and you just keep watching it. And I just love, I'm like, I can't believe you guys are watching what I've done. Bearing in mind, I was pregnant that time with Nene. Oh, I, I didn't know I was pregnant. Oh, okay. wow. it was one of those times I didn't know I was pregnant for six weeks. I didn't even know I was pregnant. I was filming the Adventures, and they kept telling me, "Oh, you need to be more motherly. You need to be more. We don't really feel the mother for man. Which kind of mother you want?" I said, "I don't Maybe get you want it." Tire <laughs> that's what they wanted in the end I ended up tying a rapper oh my god that's another story <laughs> the whole set of clothes you know what girl <laughs> hmm. anyway so that's how we started filming the Banjos in October 2020 sorry October 2010 uh, no November 2010 and it was amazing we filmed for about a month and a lot of it was improvisation um, off script we would play with the script while it would say let's play a lot of people used to actually think he was my boyfriend which is really good friends. I've known him for many years. Did you um, know him before me? Yeah, band? I did. I did know okay. him before. Okay, because I, I could see... No, the chemistry, chemistry was, was way you back. Know, we knew yeah. each other and, you know, we became, we'd already done because he's also a musician. He sings... Well, how did he work for him? Because I knew... Then, growing up in Nigeria, I used to see him on yeah. like, Nigerian movies. And then, how did he work like with... Um... No! I don't think... I mean, Wale did not leave Nigeria, leave London to go to Nigeria until maybe five... Five years ago, how many years ago? Look, remember? I mean, I think no, he, has, he, has, he has acted now, definitely. I I'm think sure. he's uh, done some I know work. him. I think soap opera, more of soap opera, more of soap opera, yeah. 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 soap opera, soap opera. Before in Nigeria. he came here, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he had done yeah we know him. On uh, we know he him. was based here in London for a long time okay. before transitioning back because he at once it, we were auditioning like where could think or There was nothing. All of us were going for auditions, but they were not picking us. Hmm. And he made that choice to go to Nigeria. I mean, I, I commend him because now look at him. He's a huge star in Nigeria. Yeah, he is. I didn't do the transition because I have kids. I'm not a solo makinde, so I had to <laughs> say, but, you know, do my own thing. So, yeah, so that's how me Daddy Banjos. And we filmed it. It was fun. You know, we had our ups and downs. There were some challenges on set. You know, that's another story. Maybe I'll put it in my book. I don't know. One challenge. Are you writing a book? One challenge. Oh, yes, I am. Darling. Oh. Great. Um, I can't yeah, wait I think, to read. It. Yeah, I think I need to. But one challenge, one, one challenge, cha- like one, like just tell us one, cha- one, cha- one challenge. Oh God, I don't want to piss anybody off because it's a long time ago. <laughs> it was some challenges, but you know what? I've learned. I've grown. I'm not saying I, you know, I didn't have my own. You know, when you get on set, you think one thing, and then another thing happens. But I think we all were all novices at that time, and some people thought they were bigger stars than other people. And it was yeah. funny that the people that thought they were big stars, 
were not the stars of the show. And the people that were not the stars of the show... Took over the show. No, no. People... Okay, let me explain. The people that thought they were the star of the show didn't mm-hmm. realize you're not the star of the show. You're just supporting. You're just not even supporting. Reoccurring. You're the money people. Okay. So, which happens that you find that some people believe that the actors is not the star of the show. Which, you know, if if you if you get that, you get it. Yeah. So, when you say the money people, there's the people... The money people the are no, not the star the of the show. No, the people they used to like. The money. Okay, yeah, yeah, I get, yeah, I, get, get it. I get, I get, I get. If you get yeah. it, I get. Forget about it. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you Yes, now. What was your point on salary? Hey, thank you very much. And that's what happened on the Avengers. The people that thought that ah, this show's gonna make me a big star. I'm looking at the person like, but you're not the actor. Okay, you know what? You do your thing. Yeah. And when the show came out, and myself, Wiley, and everybody else were getting the accolades, they were really surprised. I'm like, but you don't understand yeah. that. You're not the one that they want to see. Auntie, Auntie Moji became huge. We all, I was go to, I would be somewhere. People, even when I went to Nigeria, while they would go to Nigeria, oh my God, the way they were mobbing us, even when I, you know, even to today. And I think we all learned that give the actor, the actor's credit. Yeah. Yes, you should. Because 100%. we work so hard. And then you find that some people want the actor's credit. Well, I, it's happened to me before years ago. I did a play, a tour. And the writer thought she was the actor, the star of the show. Dude. And she tried to steal the show from everybody every night. And we'll be doing quick question and answer. And the way we'll just be sitting there. And she will, every time she would just, you know, and we were just like, why are you like this? You're the writer. Everyone knows you're the writer of the show. But give the actor the actor's space. Let them, you know, because at the end of the day, you can't exactly, your words cannot be on the stage by themselves walking around. Yeah. No, you need the actor to imbibe, yeah. imbibe it. And I feel as if every, like the same thing when I said to you, when I go on set now, they ask me anything about makeup. I don't know. Can you bring your makeup back? I'll show them the foundation I use. If you want to use this, what I'm using at the moment, other than I don't say anything because even I had to teach myself. Let me give the accolades to the director, producer, whoever they are. Yeah. I only take the accolade as an actor and everything else. I just watch. Yeah. Because you don't want to step, people People have too many egos in this business. Mm. Ah, no, if that makes I sense. I feel it's, it's, a, it's an ego driven space. Yeah, it is an yeah, ego driven space. It is. So, um, in terms of. Um, no, I think I'm talking too much. I'm no, sorry. no, it's not too much. We're enjoying it. We're enjoying it. 